Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I rank the worst sports card designs of 1994 across all four sports. When I put together this list, I was pleasantly surprised to see the, the variety that showed up here. And I like the fact that there's variety, even though I don't like hardly any, any of these cards. But the reason is because for me in football in 1994, there's a particular look that just pervaded almost the entirety of the sport or the cards in the sport, and it always bothered me that there was so much consistency because there's there, there were not that many card sets that really stood out and were very distinct. And yet, looking at this list, the amount of variety really did. It was a lot of fun. Not great fun because it, it didn't have great images or it didn't have great cards to look at, but it was fun to look at anyway just because of how much variety there was. I was pleased to see that. But again, these cards are on, a, on the list for a reason, so, you know. And I do have eight cards here. So I have a bottom five, and then I have, well, I don't have three honorable mentions. I have one honorable mention, so I really have a bottom seven in this case. Seven that I've just got to talk about as being letdowns at best. So the one card that I don't think is a worst of card, but I can't let off the hook, is Collector's Choice for Basketball. And for Choice... In baseball, they had a little bit extra in the border and they had good images, so the, the set actually worked pretty well. In football, they streamlined it a little bit more so the border was just white, but the images at least were, they tended to be fairly strong even though the card hampered the ability for the images to read. But in basketball, it's very much a problem where this is a card where the card design itself is extremely simple and straightforward and bland. And the reason I've always hated this card design is because in 1994, almost everything was distinctive and strong. And this one, especially when you go through a ton of these cards, they just become white noise. They're very, very understated is a compliment. In this case, they're, they feel like they're trying to be cheap. And nowhere is that more clear than in basketball where the images are too busy. That's the big problem. Now, if this card was borderless, the images would actually read better because the background, that busy background, would become kind of like a kind of like a matting, almost like a border. Not quite. It still would be kind of difficult for the players to come through. But when you add the white border, that means that the background has a tendency, if it's not well selected, to become a lot stronger. And that's the thing with these cards is the fact that the border itself is very strong, overpowering, very very underachieving and then the images themselves don't pop out they're not very they're not strong hardly at all so it's that's the issue but i have to say it's not that i hate this card so much as i'm really really disappointed by it at number seven though as i get into the actual list of cards that are a failure i got to start off with excalibur and with excalibur this is a card that has better chosen images. Not wonderfully chosen, but they're better. They're more distinct. You tend to know who the player is on the card. That helps. Unfortunately, the images are not very strong, in large part because the material of the card does not allow for a lot of visual acuity. The colors are muted, and you don't really feel sharp corners on this in the images on this card. So the card the, itself does not have images that are really strong and engaging. And then the card does not have much of a border. It has the edge logo, which is nice enough, but the design features that make the card stand out are silver foil that are very difficult to see. And even when they are, they tend to get lost in the, in the complex, which means that the card is pedestrian at best. It does have kind of an intrigue to it and that so that's why it's up here where it's at but it's not a lot and then at number six i've got a card that actually does a lot of the things that i was complaining about right at number six i have opichi in baseball first off it has a very 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 clear design feature with that team color box down at the bottom with the player name actually that's a really good feature i like it a lot and then the images the images aren't the worst selected images in the world. I mean, they're, they're not great images, but they work pretty well. And so this is a card that has a couple of the things that it needs to start to turn into a decent card, 
but all of the work that it does to to be a decent card is lost with that box down the side with the team name which it clashes with everything first off it doesn't even work with the box down at the bottom which doesn't even cross all the way over if they were both seemingly free floating then it, it would be fine but the free floating box at the bottom works well as a free floating box the one on the side is a tether it basically it's like a wall that's the thing so take for instance robbie thompson I look at this card and I wonder how he gets the swing in because I really, artistically, I love what they did with having all that empty space. You feel the swing of the bat. All of that is great, but it doesn't look like he has room behind him for a bat. It's like there's a, a wall right behind. That's the way these cards feel. This one portion just sits down and just, it stops everything. So whatever potential the Opeechee cards had, they were completely lost and that's it's really unfortunate as i move on to number five now i'm stepping over to pacific in football which is very similar to excalibur it has an image that is actually this is actually an intriguing image intriguing because when i take the time and i really take the time to look at it i find this is really good but not at this size. That's the big problem they have with this card is the images are selected for the wrong size. If this was a magazine photo or a poster or even a gridiron card, I'd like it a lot better because all the intricacy of the detail of the background is just really, really nice. And the player is clear. I mean, Jerry Rice is very clear on the card or I should say his jersey is, but he's not because when I look at the card and the jersey grabs my attention, immediately I'm looking at the green in the background and I'm looking at the yellow pants. Those two or those three elements gather together and they dominate the card and he doesn't stand out. So in the case of these Pacific cards, the images are good if you take the time to really give them a chance, but they don't stand on their own. So what this card needs is a design element. And it almost has that in gold foil for the logo at the top, the player name at the, down at the bottom, but you can't see it. Like hardly ever do you, are you ever able to see this. And so when you put multiple cards together, it's just a bunch of busy images that are all kind of gathered together. You don't really see the player at any point. So this card is just a complete mess in terms of it doesn't do anything. It really doesn't. But it could, it could under the right circumstances, at least with the image, be an amazing image. So not a rousing success at all. This is a card that I've always been really disappointed with, which is why it's here on this list. And at number four, I've got one that has bothered me even more, which is Fleer Basketball. And in this case, this... Okay, so I complained about the images in Collector's Choice. Well, in Fleer, the images are better but they're not better in terms of the image itself. I actually like the choice images better. It's just they don't work with the design of the card. In the case of Fleer, they're designed exactly for what they're supposed to do, which is to work with the white border. And together, those are pretty good. I think the white border is a little bit too big, but otherwise, that part of the card is pretty successful. It's the foil down at the bottom that is so bad because one, I wish that they altered the pattern on it so that there was something that felt more personal about it as opposed to just stamped on all these cards. But two, it doesn't work with anything at all. In fact, it's a contrast to such an extent that it makes the border even stronger. And that's what I've always seen all these years. Whenever I look at this card, all I see is the white border. That's it. I can see the image, but I've got to kind of work at it. And that's because the design feature at the bottom should do something to help the card, but it does nothing. It's a complete train wreck. Everything is running into each other. It is fighting itself in a, at every level. Which brings me to number three, which is Fleer in Hockey. And this is the one that really bothers me of all of these because I wish that Fleer put all of their 95 hockey or their 95 designs in 1995, but they kicked it off right at the end of 94. With hockey and so i've got to talk about that here because i could otherwise all in 1995 just look at all of them as one and completely break them down and just take the worst ones and the best one and just do that in the case of 
because in the case of 95 FLIR, there are a couple of design. Well, there's one design I can think of that I actually like. There are a lot that are really bad. So here in 1994, I can't really parse it out because there are only four designs. So I've got to do it on a grading scale. And the worst of the designs is, like I said, it is a train wreck of stuff. The colors are not great. The things that they put in in the background is not great. The way that it really doesn't work with the player is not great. This is a card that's annoying because I don't even know what they were doing. It's it's like a student was just playing around with Photoshop and made something and said save. And all of a sudden, instead of hitting save, they hit print and we got this card. It's kind of what it's like. But for all of my complaining about it, you'll notice it's number three. And when I move over to number two, here is very interesting because I go to another card that's a train wreck, except they don't have consistency with it because they have a, a picture of a player stamped right onto it. It's like a like somebody put a sticker on it or a fat head on the wall, that kind of thing. The player doesn't fit with the background and he's so front and center. For all the talk I've talked about, with a player being very clear on the card, now I've got one that does that, but it does it wrong. Because see, over in Fleer, this card is, it's more like wallpaper or a curtain or a fabric or a bad tie. It's a pattern. But that's the strength, is you can't really see anything in it, but at least it's kind of a pattern. When I go over to be a player, it is this blunt, it, it's designed to be conflict. It's at war. It's got the, the the dot pattern in the background for the image. It's got these slashing lines. It's got the tear mark and the sticker, or the player, picture player, picture of the player that feels like a sticker. All of that stuff is intended to be in conflict, to be at war with one another. And that's how I read it. I look at it and I just go, why? Why did you do that? I'm not curious about the answer. It's just... I, this is a form of pop art I don't like, as you can see. But for all the complaining about that, at number one, we got Don Russ in hockey, which, I mean, this is bleak. And ironically, some of these images are actually pretty good, but they have that big silver foil seal just stamped right on. And the thing is, it doesn't go with the card at all. It honestly looks like somebody took a sticker and put it on an image and ruined it. That's the way that it feels. I don't get this at all. And it really bothers me because I have to work to get past the seal to look at the player and figure out if I like the card. To have to work to try to, to see the card at all or the image of the card, you know, uh, the whole point of a border is to enunciate and to frame an image, not to overpower it and destroy it. And that's what this card does. So this to me is hands down the worst design of 1994. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. So that's my list of the worst card designs across all four sports for 1994. And now that I've closed this out, I'm gonna be able to move on to doing the best of designs for 1994. So that's gonna be fun to check out. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I do urge you to do so. And thank you very much for watching.